Hi, in this video, we will learn the REST-5 RTL architecture and its sub-blocks. We will also check its top-level pin diagram and the description, okay? The RTL has been implemented using three-level pipeline stage. As you can see here, we have a stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. In the pipeline stage 1, this has a program counter and this represents the fetch unit that fetches the instruction from the instruction memory. The stage 2 represents the decode stage basically and this stage decodes the instruction into different fields. And this is the stage where we also have the branch and the store unit. Now coming to stage 3, this is basically having the instructions will be executed with the help of an ALU block and the result will be written back to the CPU register. Let's discuss the pipeline stages in detail. The stage 1 has the PC MUX and the red block 1. The PC MUX acts like the program counter that generates the address for the next instruction to be fetched and you can see here this port represents the IM adder out. Now this is the address bus that provides the address for the next instruction to be fetched. Okay, and we have the red block one. This is our pipeline stage one register, which is used for the synchronization purpose. Now coming to stage two. Now since stage two has got multiple sub blocks, we have split into different two parts, part one and part two. In part one, you can see we have a branch unit, immediate generator, immediate adder. We have an a file block, write enable generator, instruction mux, and we have a decoder. So let me explain each of them briefly. This immediate generator generates the immediate constants, that is the 32-bit constants, based on the type of instruction. The immediate adder decides what should be the I adder value depending on the type of instruction, whether it will be kind of PC plus immediate or it will be kind of, you know, like RS1 plus immediate, okay? And we have the integer file. This is basically taking care of the write and read operation from the CPU general purpose register. We have a write enable generator that generates a write enable signal for the CPU registers. We have the instruction marks, which basically takes the instruction from the instruction memory and does the decoding and split the instruction into different fields like opcode, function three, function seven, the RS1 address, RS2 address, we have the destination address out and instruction out and CSR address out. And we also have the branch unit. This unit takes care of the jump instruction, both conditional and unconditional jumps. This branch taken out will be high whenever a branch or a jump instruction is fetched. And for rest of the instruction, it will be zero. We have the decoder unit here, which is the hub of the processor design here. This particular block takes different inputs from the instruction mux like the opcode, the function 3, the function 7 and the adder out coming from the immediate adder and this block generates multiple control signals which are going to control the operation of the rest of the blocks. Okay, now coming to the other sub blocks. We have the store unit, we have the machine control, the CSR file unit and the reg block 2. Now let me explain briefly for each of the sub block. The store unit is a crucial block that takes part during the data transfer operation between the processor and the data memory. So what this block does, it provides the data that the processor wants to store back to the memory. Okay. The machine control unit takes care of interrupts. Okay. The CSR file is used here. This block basically configures the control and status registers. And we have the red block too. This acts like the stage two pipeline register for synchronization purpose. And the third stage pipeline, if you look at, in this stage, we have three sub blocks. We have the load unit, we have the ALU block, and we have the write back mux select unit. This load unit is again a crucial block that takes care of the data transfer operation between the processor and the data memory. So what it does, whenever the processor wants to read or load any data from the data memory, this block takes care of that, okay? And the ALU block is the execute unit that executes the operation kind of R type, I type, and the result you can see here. And this write back much select unit decides which 
output has to return back to the processor register. The output could be an ADO result or it could be a load unit output or it could be a PC plus 4 or it could be an IADR route or it could be just the immediate constant or it could be just the RS2. Right? So this is how the subblocks operate in each of these stages. Now let me explain you the pin diagram and the pin description for the RIS-5 top block. Now this is the RIS-5 top module, you can see the core one and it has the input and output ports. So let me explain you briefly each of this port. So we have the RIS-5 clock input, that is the system clock. We have the reset which is active high asynchronous type. Now we have something called as MPRC in that is the real counter input which is 64 bit. So through this input the processor can communicate with a real time counter and get the value. The next port we have DM data in that is 32 bit. Now this is RV32Y so the processor is going to support a data width of 32 bits. And this is the port that basically gets the data from the external data memory. Now we have some control signals like data H ready in, H response in, instruction H ready in. Now these signals are basically, if you look at, these are AHB compatible signal. Now RS processor, RS5 processor is AHB compatible. It is going to follow the HP protocol during the data transfer operation between the data memory and the processor, okay? So I will discuss each of the signal in detail in the upcoming next slide. Now we have the instruction in bus which is 32 bit. So this is basically is the bus through which the instruction will be fetched from the instruction memory. Now we have the set of three interrupt signals. One is for external interrupt, timer interrupt and the software interrupt. Now coming to the output side, we have the IM adder route which is 32 bit. Now this is the bus that comes from the program counter and it has the address for the next instruction to be fetched. So this bus connects to the instruction memory. Now we have a DM adder route. Now this is the address bus that connects to the data memory. So based on this address, the data will be either written to the external memory or it can be read from. Now we have the DM data out. This is the data bus through which the processor writes the data to the external data memory. Okay. Now we have the DM write mask out. This is used for masking purpose. And this is a write request out which will be used for performing a write operation within the data memory from the processor end. And we have one more output that is data H runs out which is 2 bit. This is another HB signal. So I will explain you each port again in detail. So let's see that in the next slide. So here is the table that explains about the top level pin description. So we have the clock input which is a system clock and with respect to this clock all the sub blocks of RIS-5 top module will be synchronized too. Okay. Now the next one is the reset input which is the system reset called as a power on reset and this is active high asynchronous pin. Now this reset signal will be used to reset the internal registers like the program counter, the general purpose register which you, I said right, the integer file has got 32 general purpose register. So these registers will be reset respect to this input. Now we have the DM data in. Now this is a data bus which is 32 bit and this contains the data that will be fetched from the external memory. We have the instruction H ready in which is an active high signal and is an HB signal and this indicates that the HB slave which is instruction memory in our context is ready to sample the instruction address and start driving the instruction to the processor core. We have the data H ready in that is another active high signal and this indicates that the data memory which is again the HB slave is ready to sample data from the processor during the write operation or the store operation. We have the H response in which is an active low signal. This indicates that the HP slave that is the data memory is ready to drive the data to the processor during the load instruction or the read operation. Then we have the data H runs out. This defines what kind of transfer is currently happening within the processor and the data memory. It could be a non-sequential transfer or an ideal transfer. Now we have some other signals like we have the instruction in which is a 32 bit instruction bus. This contains instruction fetched from the external memory. 
The RCN is 64 bit, it contains the current value read from a real time counter to the processor. Now these are the set of interrupts input, we have the external interrupt, we have the timer interrupt and we have the software interrupt request. Now the next control signal is a DM write request out. This is an active high signal, this indicates a request to write data to the data memory. It is used only during the write operation and is an output signal. We have the IM adder route that is coming from the program counter. This contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched from the instruction memory. And finally we have a DM adder route. Now during write operation this particular bus contains the address of the data memory where the processor wants to write. During read operation it contains the address of the memory position from where the data has to be loaded from. And remember the address is always aligned on a 4 byte boundary that is the last two bits will be always maintained as 0. Now we have the DM data out. This is the data bus basically that connects to the data memory. It contains the data to be stored in the memory. It is used only with the write operation. And finally we have the DM write mask out. It contains a mask of 4 byte write enabled bits and based on this bit it basically tells the which corresponding byte has to be returned and again this is used only with the write operation. So that's all about the pin descriptions. Thank you for watching this video.